you're live awesome all right now we are starting session 228 configuring email on a mobile device so our objectives for this session are to name the possible protocols that can be used to access email accounts and describe the steps to setting those up. We'll be able to identify the most common major personal email systems that clients may want to use and name the steps to setting up and configuring personal email accounts through these systems on both the iOS and Android operating systems. We'll also be able to identify common pitfalls when configuring or establishing email accounts on mobile devices, including any security concerns. Any questions on what we'll be learning today? All right, I'm going to move on. Then. So we're going to need to be adaptable uh, because you'll be working with a lot of different email systems and being able to uh, set up based off of which email system you're using is a good skill to have. And it's important to be persistent because it doesn't always go smoothly. So we got to keep a clear head. All right, email protocols. So before I start with our email protocols, uh, I'd like to let you guys know that we're going to be learning different port numbers. And we'll go into more detail about what those port numbers mean later. But it's a good idea to go ahead and create some flashcards of port numbers. So when it says it uses port 110, so on one side, you'll have port 110. On the other, you'll have pop three. And practice those port numbers. You will be using them a lot. And it is a lot easier to learn new ones when you only have to study three at the moment. And for those of you who are curious and want to know, computers have roughly about 65,000 ports. But thankfully, CompTIA only requires we learn about half of them. Seriously, it's about like 20, not, not like 35,000. So, yeah, that's not that bad. But it is a lot easier if you write down your ports early and study them as you go. All right, so let's get into this. So the main protocols that are used for email and mobile devices are going to be the same as desktop. So our first one is POP3. And this is a client server protocol in which email is received and held for you uh, in an, on an internet server. So periodically, the client email receiver checks the mailbox on that server and downloads an email. POP3 is designed to delete mail on the ser server as soon as the user has downloaded it, and it uses port 110. So once uh, you can, if you have your email on your phone connected with POP3, then it'll take, when you, when you access that email, it'll move the email from the, the web server and put it onto your device and it deletes it from the mail server. So when you're using POP3, it's only going to be in one place at a time. Right. Our second protocol is IMAP4, but we typically refer to it as IMAP. Uh, and that provides the user more capabilities for retaining email on the server and for organizing it in folders on the server. Also, it allows simultaneous access by multiple clients. IMAP can be thought of as a remote file server, and it uses port 143. So when you're using IMAP, you can have the email on your phone. You can have it on the web server. You can have it in multiple areas, and it won't just be deleted. So POP3 and IMAP are used for 
receiving emails. So in order to send emails, we're going to use SMTP, send mail to people. And this is a protocol for transferring email across the internet. So you send email with SMTP and a mail handler receives it on the recipient's behalf and it'll use port 25. So configuring an email account requires POP3 or IMAP a server to handle the incoming and SMTP servers are used to handle outgoing. So you're either going to use POP3 and SMTP or IMAP and SMTP. Are there any questions so far? Quick um, check. Does anybody remember the number, the numeric value of 143? When you like either want it to like have a pager because I'm aging myself when I type in 143. Remember the music soul child song? I love you, 143. One represents I, four represents love, three represents you. Wow. I guess I am old. Okay. Well, we're not anything, Marvin, but you know. Well, uh, <laughs> if that's the case, if you don't remember it, that was my way to remember IMAP because IMAP was is close to I love you, which uses port 143. So I'm telling you, you make this stuff your own, you'll remember it. I will never forget IMAP at this point. Yeah. Marvin has a lot of really good memorization tricks. I'm random. And, That's all. And, I'm a very and, random guy. <laughs> but honestly, those are the best ways to remember these these type of things because it it can be difficult to just associate three letters with a number. You know, like pop three one ten. Like what do those have in common? Um, you can remember that there's two P's, so there's going to be two ones, one zero, one ten. You know, there, you just have to create those associations, but the sooner you, you write them down, the easier it'll be to remember. All right. So email protocols security. Most email servers have traditionally used SSL or Secure Socket Slayer or TLS, Transport Layer Security, to encrypt the email transmission for extra security. Also, many servers block their default ports, which is the reason that email protocols create more secure versions of themselves. And you can denote them as being secure, as being POP3S, IMAPS, SMTPS. If you see that S at the end of it, that's typically going to mean secure. Like we'll be doing another port later, HTTP, which is a P at the end you use in the protocol. Yep. Um, we use HTTP for like to surf the web, but if you Notice it'll say HTTPS as the secure version of it. But we'll get into that later. Um, so these are some good ports to have written down as well. So secure POP3 that uses a TCP port on uh, 995. Secure IMAP is going to use TCP on port 993. And secure SMTP is going to use a TCP port on or on port 465 or 587. Sometimes it'll be on multiple ports. Finally, email servers configure other settings such as SMIME or secure multi-purpose internet mail extensions, 
which is used to configure digital signature settings for email and contacts from the corporate address book. So if you see a question that has that's asking you about security with email, a lot of the times it's going to be SMIME. So that's a, a good one to have written down for yourself. Uh, if the email server has security settings configured, email clients must set up the same security settings in order to communicate. Kelly, will you pick a student for me? Romario. Romario. What port does IMAP4 use? I love you. I'm in a port. Right out of the gate. <laughs> Thanks, Marvin. I needed that. It uses 143. 143. Awesome. Well done. Kelly, are you picking two more for me? Nina. Nina, what port does SMTP use? Send mail to people. Twenty-five. Nice. TJ. TJ. Finish us off with the port for pop three. 110. 110. Awesome. Well done, guys. All right. So, Microsoft Exchange. Microsoft provides a special type of email server called an Exchange server. This is used mainly in large businesses so that employees can access their emails, calendars, and instant messages from a variety of locations. EAS, or Exchange Active Sync, is a Microsoft protocol used to synchronize Microsoft Exchange email, contacts, and calendars across a range of mobile operating system platforms. It has the capability to set up and configure network connectivity and secure email options, like setting passwords and remotely wipe or lock a mobile device. In order to set up uh, an exchange uh, account, uh, it, we're going to set it up the setup of Exchange is not different from other setup, but does require more information. I couldn't figure out how to word that <laughs> more naturally. <laughs> so uh, the things that you'll need for it, you'll need the Exchange server address. You'll need a username and password for your account. And then you will need the domain name for the account as well. Are there any questions so far? So if I know that like the exchange server is located at you know 525 8th Street in Jacksonville, Florida, is that all I need? Can you... What was the question again? Yeah, can you repeat the question? You know, it's an exchange service. So if I know the server is located at like 525 East 8th Street in Jacksonville, Florida, is that good for the address? See, Chris says no. Why do you say no, Chris? Have to be an IP address. Oh, IP address. Okay. So not a physical address where it's located. Mm hmm Okay, just checking. Good addition, Kelly. 
Now, Kelly, will you pick three more students for me? I can do that. Adele. Adele. Server. Port and or ports does secure SMTP use. Uh, four, five, six. Or no. you're, you're close on that one. Mm. You said for secure SMTP, right? Yep. Um, or five eight seven. There's five eight seven. Yeah. And then you're really close on the the first one you said. Oh, four six five. No, four. four six five. Yeah. There you go. Well done. Chris Marson Gill. All right, Chris. What port and or ports does Secure Pop 3 use? 995. Well done. One more, Kelly. Luis. Luis finishes off with the port for secure IMAP. Secure IMAP? Yes, sir. 993. Awesome. Well done. All right. Email and mobile devices. So every modern mobile device comes with an email service set up specifically from the mobile operating system developer as a starter. They offer email services for creating or integrating accounts. The email integration process is known as integrated commercial provider email configuration. So for an example, the Apple iOS, is going to use these kind of cloudy looking uh, format for their apps. The built in email app integrates with the iCloud. Android looks like this. Well, probably not today. You'll probably just see like a Gmail. Circa five years ago. Yeah, uh, but it integrates with Gmail. I think now they just go ahead and use like a Gmail app. Uh, and then for Windows Phone, it'll look kind of like that and it integrates with Outlook. So you need to know what the Apple iOS integrates with the Android integrates with, and the Windows. Can you hear us now, Chris? Or are you still unable to hear? I'm gonna move on and hopefully he can hear us. He's back. Okay, cool. All right, so some common email providers. Aside from the integrated service, there are common email providers such as Google, Yahoo, and Outlook that are easy to configure on each device. The only requirements to set up an existing email account are a user name and password. It's a good idea to know these different email options. <clears throat> yes, there are people out there that still have AOL accounts. Yep. So we have Exchange, Mobile Me, Gmail, Yahoo, AOL. Can set up others. All right, 
Kelly, will you pick a student for me? Renzi. Renzi, can you tell me what we need in order to set up an exchange account? Password. We need a username and password. What else? We need two more things. An IP address. Yeah, we need the exchange server IP address. And then we need one more thing. Oh, okay. That was one of the last ones. That's on the yeah, that's on the name for account. Right. Yep. We need a domain name for the account, the username and password, and then the exchange server address, the IP address. Good job. Kelly, will you pick another student for me? Renee. Renee, can you tell me what email app integrates with the Apple iOS? I was too excited. I misspelled it. It's iCloud. iCloud, yep. Perfect. Oh, I didn't even see it in the chat. Well done. All right, Kelly, one more. Kaylin. Kaylin, what email app is integrated with Android operating systems? Gmail. Gmail. Kelly, one more to finish us off. Marisha Sims. Marisha, can you tell us what email app integrates with Windows phones? Outlook. Yes, well done. All right. So some common email apps that we might see are Yahoo. I don't know if Flickr's really used anymore. Yahoo, Yahoo, Yahoo. I think, I guess that's photo and video for Yahoo. Uh, Google and Outlook. So it's also possible to download the email provider app into the mobile device. Though app, those apps may have more functionalities than the default service for emails on each device. So in general, it's probably, if you have a Gmail account, it might be easier to just download the Gmail app than to use whatever uh, your basic email app is. In order to configure email manually, we'll be doing these steps. So mobile devices also enable to set up standard corporate and ISP providers email configurations. This configuration is done manually and it is required to have the following information to complete this setup. So we need the fully qualified domain name or the FQDN of our POP3 server or on four server. This server receives the email sent to you, so it is sometimes called incoming. Can we send mail through POP3 or IMAP? Let's get some in chat answers. All right. 
saying lots of no's, which is good because we do not send emails through POP3 or IMAP. We send them through SMTP. So we will also need to know our fully qualified domain name for our SMTP server. This server sends our email to the recipient's email server. So this is also sometimes known as outgoing. So outgoing, that's what you're sending. Incoming is what you're receiving. You're also going to need the port numbers used for both server types and the security type if they're being used. Any questions so far? Sorry if I find the link there. It's a little more complicated than just setting up your Gmail account because you just need username and password for those. But in many times in enterprise situations or big companies, they're going to have their own email servers they're operating off of. So this yep. is the way you would go about setting them up. All right. So now setting up email in an Apple device. So our first step is to go to settings, passwords and accounts, and then you're gonna tap add accounts. If you have an Apple device, you can follow these steps now and see what it would look like. If not, you can look at our pictures. Our second step, go ahead, Kelly. Say again, remember if you're an Android person, it is good to know the steps for Apple, as you may sometimes set up Apple devices. And if you're an Apple person, it's good to know the Android steps um, so that you can assist people with that as well. Yep. And if you are one or the other and you know somebody that uses the, the opposite, then you know it might be a good idea to ask them if you can play around with their phone just to kind of, you know, don't change any settings because you don't want to <laughs> mess up their phone. But getting comfortable using those devices is a, a great way to learn. My wife has an iPhone. I have Android. So when I was having to learn a lot of this stuff, I would go and practice it on her phone so I could get more comfortable. Uh, <laughs> she actually, uh, when I was studying for the 1001, uh, I studied with her to kind of, I would teach it to her as a way to help me study. And uh, I got to a question on, it, it was some Apple question and I didn't know the answer, but she did. And so she was able to teach me. It, I think it was a shortcut that I needed to know, but that, it was super helpful. So it it can be useful to talk to people that are on the other side of your, your operating system spectrum. So let's move on to our next step. We got to tap other, then tap add mail account. Step three, we're going to enter your name, email address, password, and a description for your account. You're going to choose IMAP or POP3 to configure the information for incoming mail server and outgoing mail server, then tap next uh, for the outgoing SMTP. If your email settings are correct, tap save to finish. If the email settings are incorrect, you'll be asked to edit them. Are there any questions? If not, I'm going to hand it over to Kelly so I can get a glass of water real quick. <laughs> Would you like to pick up the share? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I was actually going to just try to click next on the shared screen, which is going to be really funny for about 30 seconds. Yep. Oh, I got 
got mad at it and wondering why it wasn't responding. No. All right. Every time I share screen, it moves everything around. I don't know why. All right, next step. Setting up email in Android. Or, oh, excuse me, setting up more email security in Apple devices. Once you've established your email, if you want to establish greater security, you click on the advanced icon uh, to end at your incoming server, and you can switch it over to use SSL or Secure Socket Slayer, uh, which is a um, greater level of encryption. So you're not sending your emails over open air, essentially, or in plain text. Um, you can set the authentication password um, if it has not already been established at that point. And then you can click back and then you do the same thing with your SMTP or send mail to people. Um, port as well, turn it on, use SSL. If you have the option to use either SSL or TLS, if your company has not, uh, they said basically you could use either one understand TLS is the higher security standard. SSL is what it was replacing and SSL is actually considered a cracked encryption method. So it is no longer considered fully viable for uh, securing your data. If you have the option TLS over SSL, it's the newer technology. It's easier to spot in port numbers because it's a higher port number than SSL. All right. So after you've established your authentication password, you back right out and you should be good to go on that. Next, we'll be setting up email in Android. I got a little bit ahead of myself in the last slide, but now I'm fully caught up. We're all here now. Beautiful. All right. So when you're in here, you're going to click, you're going to go to your device's email icon. If one has not already been set up on the page that follows, select add account. Type in your email address and password. If you're using one of the main ones that they utilize, click next, select POP3 or IMAP, whichever one you depend or you prefer um, because there are pluses and minuses to either one. They're both equally good. They just have different uses for different types of accounts. Um, on the next screen, you enter your username or your email address, password, the FQ, FQDN. What does FQDN stand for again? My amnesia kicks in late in the day. Coffee level is getting low. Who wants to tell me what FQDN is? Fully qualified domain name. Beautiful. <laughs> Fully qualified domain name. Thank you. Uh, of the incoming server, the port number to which you are going to be attaching to that, and the security type if one is using. What is a good way to secure email? What is the one that we just we talked about earlier in this one? Had a weird name to it. Way to encrypt your email. Funny sound to it. Yeah, it's it was named after those like weird people that do funny gestures on the streets. S mime. There we go. S mime. All right. S mime. Yeah, that's there. There we go. That's what we need. That's what you use to like. I'm gonna take credit your, for that. Hopefully, take credit for that one. Hopefully, they saw me. <laughs> Instead of mimes, plural, it's S mime. You put the S on the back end. All right. So you're going to need that port number and security type if one is in use. Uh, the next, you need to do the same thing for your outgoing mail server, SMTP, with the FQDN, port number, username, password, and also select require sign in. Here are a quick look at the screens you should be seeing along that journey to setting up the email. Now, setting up an exchange, which is not a, you know, already accepted type of email in the Android. 
you go to open the mail application, enter your email address and password, click next, and then click exchange account. Um, at that point, you would enter in your domain, username, your password, and the exchange server address to which you are going to be attaching this. All this information should be provided to you. You should not be guessing this information. When you're dealing with your corporate uh, office, they're gonna be like, all right, here's the, you know, they'll give you the basic information and it's be like, all right, here's what you need to set up the email. And then you would go from there. Um, you would check, uh, use secure connection <clears throat> and accept all SSL certificates or secure sockets layer. After authentication, check the boxes associated with the features that you want to include. Um, such as push, amount to sync, like how many emails will you sync at any given time? Are you going to do like a week's worth, two weeks worth, um, a month, a year, unlimited? Understand that each time you do this, it's going to, you know, these types of things chew up a lot of memory uh, on the mobile device if that's what you're using. A lot of people will use the mobile devices for just kind of for quick reference and for the most part would use their uh, desktop uh, uh, for archiving purposes. All right, questions so far? All right, after authentication check. Uh, yep, we already did that. All right, then after that, you would click next on the screen and you could give the account a specific name. This is important, especially if you're using multiple accounts, you don't want five accounts named Outlook. Um, if you have one that you would dedicate as essentially a junk mail, uh, email. So if you're signing up for anything and it requires an email, but you don't want to flood your mailbox, have that as like junk mail, you know, so that you know that's coming in, you know, just to go in and clear that out every month or two, just to keep it empty. Um, you have your personal one, your work one, all that stuff. If all of them are operating off of Outlook. You don't want everyone named Outlook. And you also don't want to be sending emails out on your work email. That would be for personal use. So you want to be able to maintain that separation. So in this you know, aspect, you would want to give them each a name that would identify to you what these emails are meant to be used for. Questions so far? All right. Setting up email in a Windows phone. Highly unlikely you'll come across this, but there are still about 15 or 20 Windows phone holdouts out there that desperately want to hang on to those devices and just think that the rest of the world made a mistake and in one day they'll come to their senses. However, we need to go over it just in case you run across one of these in the wild. So you set up, start, you know, on the start button, flick left to the app list, go to tap emails and accounts, add an account and signify other account. Tap the email address box, type in your email address, then go down, select your password, and then type in your password. Next, you would want to select your POP3 or IMAP, whichever one is the preference of the person you're setting up the phone for, and then establish your SMTP server's name, user, and password. And then after that, you click sign in, and you should be good to go and be able to verify connectivity at that point. Questions so far? All right, moving right along. Some of the pitfalls when configuring emails, remembering the username and password. This is a big one. A lot of people, um, when they're new to an organization, especially, they go through like password exhaustion because they're handed 15, 20 accounts, all of which have unique sign-ins and passwords. They've got to remember all of this stuff and be able to get into everything. And then unfortunately, just about the time you start to remember everything, that's when it rolls around that you've got to renew all of your passwords and stuff like that for security reasons. So remembering passwords is a big one. And especially when we talk about security, you never write down passwords. That is a big no-no. So if they don't, but if they don't know their passwords, <clears throat> unfortunately, they will not be able to get into their accounts unless they go through a recovery process, which is why we need secondary emails or phone numbers to be able to initiate a secondary recovery protocol. 
or if this is a corporate account, IT should be able to reset it for them. So this is something that you may have to do on a regular basis, although they automate it pretty heavily by this point. It used to be there were guys on IT teams. If you were new to the team, you basically just spent your entire day helping people re renew their passwords. And they would pay someone basically dedicated to just sit there and renew people's passwords for them. Not the most exciting job in the world, but it usually was like your first job into IT. But some IT guy got really angry at some point and automated this and everybody jumped on it at that point. So now you don't have to have somebody dedicated to that particular process. All right, know your provider settings. This is another big pitfall. You need to be able to, you know, you should, like I said before, you should receive this information from your, <clears throat> from your, you know, like supervisors or what have you. Here is the domain name, the server, you know, what, you know, what we're using, POP3, you know, IMAP, whatever, all that information should be provided to you and you just need to know where to put it. So make sure you know what it is, you know, the information you need to be able to log into your servers. Because if you're doing a general exchange, sign in password alone is not gonna cut it. All right. <clears throat> if your email's working well for a while, all of a sudden you start getting messages it's not connecting downloading you know whatever it happens to be um it may be that the server is down or that the dns server that is between you and the email server is not functioning properly this does happen from time to time sometimes it takes you um flushing your dns or emptying out the dns field and then it goes and tries to retrieve that information anew, and that could correct the issue. We'll get into what that means later. DNS stands for Domain Name Server. But we will get into that a little bit more when we get into networking. Questions thus far? Yes, Evan. You said Domain Name Server? Yeah, DNS stands for Domain Name Server. Okay. okay. What it is and what it does, uh, probably, I think, next week, maybe the week after. I can't remember the schedule. Thankfully, I wrote it down. But, so yeah, DNS server. All right, next. Oh, this is just rehashing some of the other content we went through. Um, they have extra TLS. Um, options for a lot of these. If you see SSL slash TLS, typically that means it is TLS, but it's it's a protocol replacing SSL because I had stated earlier that that encryption uh, standard is considered to be no longer viable at this point. It has been cracked, so hackers that actually know what they're doing can bypass any encryption with SSL. So TLS is now the new standard. more optional content time to climb i know you guys were hoping we had one of these i could just see it in everybody's eyes can we just get to the game all right do we have any questions with regards to setting up email in a mobile device All right. With that, we should be able to name the possible protocols that can be used to access email accounts and describe the steps in setting these up. Identify the most common major personal email systems that clients may want to use and name the steps of setting up and configuring personal email accounts through these systems, both in the iOS, Android, and Windows systems. Identify common pitfalls in configuring and establishing email accounts and mobile devices, including security concerns. 